March 31st, 2023, a day the people of Arkansas will never forget. A day filled with images and memories like the ones you see on your screen. A day hopefully filled with lessons. 90 days later and recovery efforts are still underway, but now there's a focus on what we can learn from this disaster. As meteorologist Scott Covert shows us, new research is shedding light on common beliefs about tornadoes many people have heard their entire lives, but may not be true. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Okay. There it is. We have a tornado. You can that see could the be a strong tornado. It could be yeah. an EF2 or greater. March 31st, 2023, a day that many will never forget. A day when our worst fears came true as an EF3 tornado tore through central Arkansas, leaving lives upended and our grit tested. Months later, as recovery efforts continue, meteorologists like Dylan Cooper and his colleagues at the National Weather Service are sifting through thousands of pieces of data collected in the aftermath of the storm. Their goal? To learn all they can in hopes of saving lives when future storms hit. Research is one of the big things that we focus on uh, to help better understand the events that happen, to help better tell the science story. The story this data can tell teaches us a lot, and it challenges some of the common misconceptions that people often believe about tornadoes. For example, let's zero in on this section of the Twister's Path, beginning where it crossed Chennault Parkway in West Little Rock. Here we see terrain plays a huge role in how tornadoes move and grow. You can see it's rated an EF1 with winds estimated at 90 miles an hour. But notice as the storm began climbing the large hill up to the Calais Forest Apartments, the storm rapidly intensified into an EF3, packing winds of 140 miles an hour. A lot of this comes down to very complex, small scale factors. We're talking elevation differences, hundreds of feet, not thousands of feet. That hill illustrates the big impact that even subtle elevation changes can have. Here we're talking about just a couple of hundred feet, but it's the drop in elevation that follows which dismantles the belief that valleys offer protection from tornadoes. It's a myth that I've heard I don't know how many times that if you live in a valley, you're protected from tornadoes. I'm not sure where that myth exactly originated from, but I think this case pretty much proves that you're not safer in a valley, unfortunately. Not only did the lower elevation of Walnut Valley not provide protection for the hundreds of people living here, it's possible just the opposite is true. One of the hardest hit areas, Walnut Valley, uh, we have the tornado come up over the top of the hill, Napa Valley Drive. Uh, very intense EF3 tornado. It weakened briefly, and once it got down into the valley bottom, uh, that's where we saw the most intense damage. The valley where people lived and worked dealt with what the Weather Service describes as the core of the worst damage as winds reached speeds up to 165 miles an hour. In fact, again, with, with what we saw in that specific area, uh, valleys could actually enhance uh, the strength of tornadoes. So that myth effectively busted. How the tornado made its way through the hills and the valleys of West Little Rock isn't the only thing that caught researchers' attention. The path also took it right across the Arkansas River, dispelling another long-standing belief when it comes to how these powerful storms behave. And in this specific instance, we saw the tornado blow right across the Arkansas River itself. And as soon as it got on the other side of the river, it re-intensified very rapidly. So as far as bodies of water preventing tornadoes, it's another myth busted. One final misconception to debunk, and it may go without saying, yes, tornadoes can and do hit cities, despite the commonly held notion that they don't. The Little Rock tornado is just one of many examples throughout history. It's Cooper's belief that this myth is a result of chance. So it's really just probability and statistics as far as just not very much area for that tornado to hit. As Cooper and the Weather Service will tell you, elevation and terrain are front and center in their ongoing research, though it also includes many, many other variables. The moral of this story is preparedness and understanding the unique hazards Arkansans face. As people work to rebuild their lives, the Weather Service will continue studying the tragic events of that March afternoon. So that's one of the reasons why we focus so much on that, to try to understand again what happened, how that impacted people, and how we could move forward uh, and help make people more weather ready.
in Little Rock, Scott Covert, THV 11 News.